I call the Honourable Member Rajan Prasad. Full thank, of thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm also pleased to take a, take a call on this particular bill and to say str as strongly as one possibly can that Labour will, not, will, be oppose, will be opposing this bill because it is a bad bill, because it starts on the wrong principles and ends up in the wrong place. The member who just took his seat works the trick again that national governments have worked for a long time link beneficiaries with poverty, with abuse and with crime, and then create the space to do whatever you want to do, whatever the members want to do, whatever the government wants to do. But there are members in this House, members in this House who have been beneficiaries, who have taken the, the largesse of the state, used it appropriately, have brought up children properly and have moved on. And that's the purpose of the benefit system, Mr Speaker. But the last speaker does not acknowledge that. The minister herself does not acknowledge that. I remember when the National Party minister, Ruth Richardson, tried something similar about how, how beneficiaries who had our children would be, would, be, would be given, in a sense, negative treatment. That didn't survive. That government was kicked out. I remember when Jen, uh, the Honourable Jenny Shipley came up with a social responsibility bill. Where did it go? Nowhere. Our society turned against that, that, those approaches, and they will turn, Mr Speaker, against this approach as well, because it is a, it is a negative approach. It is very interesting. Members of it talked about the nanny state. When, when this side was in government, they, if this is not in any state, I wonder what is. Is this government is going to tell young people how to manage this life, how to spend their money? Where is the training? They want to talk about parenting and yet not give parents the opportunity to parent. Mr Speaker, I'll return to those in a minute. But in a sense, the question I ask fundamentally, Mr Speaker, where is this government's detailed plan for welfare reform? We haven't seen it. It's coming through in pieces. It's why doesn't the government do the decent thing if it was absolutely intellectually honest, absolutely intellectually honest about trying to create a better, more effective system? Because it is not. If it was intellectually honest, it would bring the whole plan. It would put it together. It would bring the bills to the House, and we would debate that, and you might, we might even support some of that. The Select Committee could do its work. No, what it is doing, Mr Speaker, is really itching those sores that are in society, itching those prejudices that exist in our society for its own political advantage, Mr Speaker. This is not designed to make the lives of our beneficiaries any better. If it was, I would be the first to support it. This is not. This is designed to be punitive. This is no, there is no comprehensive plan, and this is, their approach is just another one of those piecemeal approaches just go so far as to give the sense to the public out there that we're doing a lot. Because look, look at the technique. The technique is the Prime Minister comes out and says, three, and the Minister did it, did it again in her introductory speech. There are 328,000 people receiving a benefit, around 12% of the entire workforce. So you create, Mr Speaker, the, the, the government creates this, this image. There is this huge group out there, and the government is now ready to address it. So what does it pick on? It picks on domestic purpose beneficiaries, mums, who are doing, by and large, a great job. And what percentage is that? Four percent. Four percent. So what happened to the rest? What, what, is, what are they going to do about the rest? There, there is no plan about that. Nothing changes. But subtly, so subtly, Mr Speaker, they, they, they do their darndest to create this sense of fear and concern in, in our society. So, and what, how did the government get here? The government got here by creating this myth of dependence. This myth of dependence. I don't hear members that side talk about the dependence of businesses on, on the largest of the state. Are they dependent and therefore is it negative? Oh no, no they, they, they're all right because they, they are somehow great. And of course I'm not impugning businesses, but they are dependent as well. But that's good dependence. But if, if a beneficiary Brings, bringing up children, Mr. McIndoe, bringing up children the, to the best of their ability who will be great citizens, like that minister did. That minister brought up her child, her daughter, uh, under, in, in, uh, with a benefit and did well and good on her. I knew her then and, and good on her. And that's what these parents are doing. But here we are creating this notion of welfare dependency in the most negative way possible, Mr. Speaker, and then using that as the whipping boy, whipping any beneficiary with that. 
almost disregarding, disregarding that many of them are doing a great job under very, very trying conditions. And yet the government, Mr. Speaker, is not doing the very thing it ought to do. Members opposite said, what did this government do? What does the Labour Party do when they were in government? Well, let me tell members opposite, and I hope they're listening, because it was the Labour government that introduced under worker income the most intensive triaging program imaginable for anybody who walked in through the front door of worker income. They were triaged right at the beginning, and, they, and so much so that they got jobs and unemployment was the lowest in the world, it was under 4%. Now, that's what happened. That's what happened. That's what this government did because it believed that the best way out of poverty, the best way out of this is through work. But you can't do it by creating an image that there's work out there because the government has not created work. In fact, it's going to put thousands more into this program of, of, work, of work testing. They'll have nowhere to go. They'll have people probably with a lot of CVs, but nowhere to go. And, and uh, Mr. Speaker, that is unfair. That is leading up people up a garden path. And that is that belies the lack of interest that, that go this government really has on the lives and outcomes of beneficiaries in this country. And this is what this bill is trying to do. It's a punitive approach. It's a negative approach. Why does the government not realize, Mr. Speaker, that this is mean-spirited? This is really mean-spirited. These are the families that produce the workers that partner capital to produce social development, to enhance this country's social development. They've always done so. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't believe there ought to be a big divide between workers and capital. There ought to be a synergy amongst them. Our families produce the workers. They, they work day and night to, to, to bring these children to the world Give them the best start possible, sometimes on their own and sometimes with some assistance. For the period those children are growing up, that is the best investment the state can make. And, and yet the government here is discounting that. If it believed in that, it would, it, it would design the most effective system possible. But, Mr. Speaker, the government is devoid, devoid of ideas on how to design an effective, comprehensive system, solutions to contemporary social issues and problems, the very issues that they articulate, Mr. Speaker, but they don't show any passion, any, any smarts to actually de design 21st century ideas. They use those words, they talk about backing these, these, these people, but Mr. Speaker, they go nowhere. There is so much that is, that is wrong about this. Mr. Speaker, the, I want to focus on parenting for the last two minutes of my speech. Why is the government trying to make it so difficult for, for sole parents trying to bring up their children? Because parenting is difficult. They ought to be supporting them. They, but, but here they are trying to create a punitive system. In the same way, it doesn't understand, Mr. Speaker, the, the needs of youth. Why are we not training our youth to use the money that they're given? No, we're going to create a, a nasty system that, that where people will be watching them and telling them what they can spend. Now, if that's not nanny state, and I ask the minister, and I ask Mr. McIndoe, McIndo, who will speak next, why is that not nanny state? When, when other things uh, that side pilloried us when we're designing this system, uh, that they were nanny state. So, Mr. Speaker, the, the, the government has no ideas for job creation, but they think the jobs will be there. So there will be this treadmill, I predict, and that will make many of our young people turn against this government and turn against the state, and they'll create more problems. There will be a treadmill, Mr. Speaker, of people coming in, finding themselves in a situation, be going, through the, going through the system in this really negative way and really beginning to doubt that themselves, their ability to bring up their children and the very state that they desire to be part of. Mr. Speaker, the perverse effects of this, of this program are, are going to be long, felt long term because this is, this is discounting a generation. This, and, and this doesn't put any value in our families doesn't value, put it value our youth, but it, it, it's couched in the language of valuing our parenting and valuing it. This is about cuts. This is about reduction. This is about trying to pay for those tax cuts, and they're selling our state as it's doing it. There is no... Why, why is the one line missing? Mr. McIndoe, answer that question. Why is the one line missing from the regulatory impact statement? That is holding this House in contempt. That is not telling us 
as, as legislators, the whole truth. So, Mr. Speaker, this is an awful bill, and I look forward to debating this throughout the Select Committee. Thank you. I call the Honourable Member Holly Walker.